All right, let's get practicing in QuickBooks Online. Grab the link below in the description so that you can follow along. All right, here we are in the QBO Gym. And the QBO Gym is a place where we have numerous hands-on exercises that simulate real life scenarios that you may encounter as a bookkeeper. Every single month we come out with new exercises for you to practice and complete, and we break it down for you into four different sections. Today we're gonna to be working in the February year one warm-ups section. At the top here is an animated video to give you an understanding of what you, the bookkeeper, are going to do for Craig this month. He is our fictitious business owner. Further down is an interactive quiz to test your knowledge. Below that are all of the exercises within this section. And then at the bottom here is an optional area where after you have completed all of the exercises in this section, we have some sample posts that you can use on your LinkedIn to share with everybody what you have learned so far. So let's go ahead and dive right into our exercise today where once again, we are going to practice processing the money that came in this month, specifically about a PayPal sale. Go ahead and click on that link to pull up the, uh, pull up the exercise. I have it over here on the right hand side. So let's see what our scenario will be for today. Craig also sold a fountain pump to on his online store. The online customer paid via P PayPal and PayPal charged a 3% fee. Craig has already transferred the money to his checking account. So let's see how to record this. You will need to be in the same session of the sample company that you did the previous exercise in. If you have not completed that one yet, go ahead and click on the link on the top right corner of your screen. That'll take you to that exercise, complete that one, and then come back to this one. Let's get started with this exercise. Now there are several ways to record online sales. This exercise shows only one of them. In a real life scenario though, you would need to take into account the entirety of your client's situation. For example, if Craig also purchases via a pay PayPal account and sometimes uses the PayPal balance, you would need to set up PayPal as a quote bank account that money flows into and out of. But for this exercise, we're going to assume that Craig only uses PayPal to receive payments and he does not have an e-commerce store such as Spot or Shopify, excuse me. In this case, you can use a sales receipt to record both the sale and the fee. So to create that sales receipt, we need to click on the plus new button and then select sales receipt. So I'm going to go here into the sample company. This is the dashboard. Um, the plus new button is over here on the top left corner. Click on that and then under customers, select sales receipt. Now, Craig does not need to keep track of all individual customer names for his online sales. This is already available in PayPal. Instead, we will create a PayPal, set PayPal sales customer. In a real life scenario, you could, you, you could then use this customer for all future PayPal sales uh, records. So to create that customer in the customer field, let's type PayPal sales, and then we're going to click plus add new PayPal sales. So click into that customer field right there. Go ahead and type PayPal sales. And when you do, you see this plus add new PayPal sales, go ahead and click on that. And a customer profile is going to appear. Now there's nothing else that we need for this new quote unquote customer that we need to track. So we're not gonna fill out any other information here. We simply need to click on the green save button. Go ahead and do that. And now you can see they are set up as a new customer. Craig has also deposited the money into the checking account, so we will need to select this under deposit two. Currently, it is showing as deposit to undeposited funds, and that is because anytime you collect checks or cash before it physically makes its way to the bank, you need to put it in this quote holding account, um, which is undeposited funds. But as we read in the scenario, Craig already deposited the money directly into his checking account, so we can go ahead and click on the down arrow and then select checking. 
Let's fill out the rest of the sales receipt. In the product service field, we're going to select pump, uh, design fountains pump, um, and that is for the sale of the fountain pump that was bought online. So click into it uh, one time or two times. You can start typing in pump, or you can click the down arrow and scroll until you find it. Um, I typed it in, so here it is showing up. Go ahead and click on that. The rest of the information is going to populate for us. Now we need to also create in the product service field an item to track the PayPal fees. So on the second line in the product service field, we're going to type PayPal fee and then select plus add new PayPal fee. So click into that. Um, go ahead and type PayPal fee. You will see this plus add new. Go ahead and click on that because we are creating this new service. You'll get this little pop out that shows up. We are creating it as a service. So click on service right there. In the income, income account field, go ahead and select bank charges. So that is right here. Click on that down arrow and you can either scroll. Um, it happens to be right here. Um, you could also have typed it in there to get it to pull up for you. We're not going to do anything else on this particular uh, page right here. So just go ahead and click on the save and close button right there. And now that uh, that service has been saved for us. Now in a real life scenario, you would be able to see the amount of the fee in the PayPal transaction. For this exercise, we're going to use QBO or let QBO do the math of the 3% uh, fee for us. So in the rate column, we're going to type 15 times negative 0 0.03. And this is the $15, that is what the cost of the fountain pump, times the negative 0 0.03, which is 3%. That's how you would rate it without the um, with a decimal. Um, and again, this is the fee, so it will reduce the total amount of the sales receipt. So in this rate field, once again, we're going to type in this equation, 15 times negative 0 0.03. Now, when you hit the tab key over, you will see that uh, QBO automatically calculates this amount to be negative 45 cents. We're not gonna work with sales tax in this particular exercise. So in the tax field, let's go ahead and uncheck both of those boxes. You may need to click into that other one two times in order to get it unchecked. Now that the fee has been applied, this fee right here, and the tax has been removed, the total will be reduced to $14.55, which we will say is what the total was for this transaction. And now we just simply need to click on save and close. We are all done with this sales receipt. Go ahead and click on that green save and close button. And now that sales receipt has been saved and that is how you would record a PayPal sale. And if you have any questions or want to know more about the QBO gym, just click on the link below in the description. Be sure to leave this session of the sample company open as you will need it for the next exercise in the warm-up section where we practice receiving payments. And I will see you.